This is an introduction to Hecker. I have decided to break down three videos to introduce you to the wonderful world of Hecker. Now, you know I'm always going on about this Hecker magic and medicine, and I thought, you know what, now's a good time to actually introduce this because Hecker's very, very much about landing on a physical platform, a physical manifestation, how you're seen in the world, and it's about now that we kind of need this understanding on how to, how to do that, right? So look, I'm not teaching anybody anything that hasn't been around since the beginning of time and alchemy is is something that is a magic i mean it's turning base metal into gold it's transformation i'm always talking a lot about um sekhmet which is why she's one of uh, my most powerful goddesses that i work with because she's a, a powerful activist um, um activist and alchemist with her fires because she works with the fire so it's all about transmutation and and she with those fires she transforms fear into courage. That's alchemy. When you, ch when you change something from a low vibration to a high vibration, it's alchemy. And we are doing that in every single moment of our lives. You don't actually realize it. When you're hungry, you go and have something to eat. And then you change the vibration, you feel full. So that's a higher vibration than feeling empty, right? You know, when you're cold, what do you do? You go and put a blanket around you or put on some warm clothes to warm yourself up. That's changing the temperature in your body to a much more preferred comfortable vibration than being freezing cold. So it's all around you. It's all around us. So Heka is actually magic and medicine, the Egyptian energy of all of that. And, you know, but let's face it, Merlin, alchemy, I mean, it's, it's all over the multiverse, the universe, you know, the world. Okay, so this is, this is kind of like really plugging you into what is your birthright. You know, we are all conscious creators. We are powerful creators. This is our most natural energy, but we've forgotten it. We've forgotten that we can actually create anything we want in this life. And we've been conditioned by the powers out there to say that, you know, we can't think, breathe, do anything without their say so. So of course, you know, we've handed all our power over, given it away to many things. Could be governments, could be relationships, could be bad jobs, whatever. But now we've forgotten how to, how to alchemize. We've forgotten how to hecker. So now this is like my mission in life to bring this magic and medicine back into its original place, which is within you, activated full on, full out. So hecker. That's exactly what it is. It's, it, it, it's magic and medicine. Heka is actually a god in Egypt who you will see depicted in this position. Okay, so his, his arms are like that. Um, he is actually a very big statue in the Egyptian museum and those Heka hands sit on top of his head. And, you know, he is, he is ultimately a god in his own right. And he was there before, the st the, before time. He was there like, you know, when, when God breathed life into everything you know so he is the original creator god he has no divine parents or anything like that he was there from the beginning right now there are many many creator gods in egypt but there's two other gods that he works well with which is his trio because three is very much an alchemical number because three is an alchemic um, al alchemy number and it's all means creation right especially in the twin flame vibration i'm always going on about the twin flame triad so of course you had osiris and you had isis and their child as a was was a um, example of them coming into union. That's a sire, um, so that's a, um, Horus. So the three, the two twin flames, Isis and Osiris, and Horus. That that was alchemy. That's the twin flame triad. So three is a powerful number for creation, right? So the other two gods are Sia and Hue. So we start with Sia. Then we go with uh, go with Hue, and then we work with Heka. So there's a process in that. Now. I'm always about formulas. That's what I'm all about. And if you're a mad alchemist like me, like formulas are everything, man. Do you know what I mean? Everything's got to equal something for us to make something, right? Now, the formula I'm going to give you now for a magic and medicine is intention plus action equals creation. Like that's a given, right? So when you break it down like that, you're like, well, that makes sense. Exactly. So what we've lost here in our manifestation abilities is, is the simplicity of the process. We've, we need the ground, we need the template to work with. And I'm very much like that. My mind works like that. And my, my energy works like this, this, this. Energy loves order, right? So now we have Sia, who is the god of vision. 
Seer is the god of vision, perception. He he uh, taps you into like all of your clairaudience, clairvoyance, clairsentience, all of the above. Okay. Then you have um, Hugh, and he is uh, depicted as a, a, a kind of anti-clockwise spiral. He is the god of utterance. He he is the spoken word. He is the god that that breathes life, you know, into being. Right. And then you have Heka. So as a result of the vision, as a result of the breathing life into the being is like a massive kaboom and then you have Heka which is basically the the outcome right intention okay plus action equals creation Seer, Hugh, Heka right so we keep it up because this is this is how my mind works and let me tell you it it really really does assist you in in changing this life of lack because you think that you're so like scarce and everything but when you look at it in a practical manner like I'm presenting to you all of a sudden it's not rocket science, you know? So we're here to build the new earth, right? And we can only do this by bringing and landing sacred ideas into its fullness, meaning into physical manifestation. So if we are not working with what I'm presenting to you here, then we can't create anything. We can't do anything. We can't create the new earth because sacred architecture, meaning new businesses, you know, um, doing up houses, um, you know, new relationships in the highest vibration, they will not come into fruition because if we don't believe in the manifestation, then if we're not work, working consciously with it, then everything is going to be low vibe and it's just going to have no, it's going to have no grounding, right? So with Heka and with alchemy, everything comes from its most highest point of frequency, the highest point of creation, right? So... Just to give you a little bit of a backstory as to how Heka really is, is, is tapped into, even by the gods of Egypt, um, you know, I'm going to break it down like this. So the people would pray to the gods and they would say, right, OK, um, please, you know, bless my harvest. Um, please make my child well, whatever their, their, their request was in prayers. OK, they would pray to the gods. So here are the people on the earth, on the ground. They would play, pray to the gods, which were up there. Now, the gods would hear their prayer and they would say, absolutely, we will grant your wishes. But now they have to actually access and, and employ the frequency of Heka from the creator gods above. So that, again, there were three levels. So they would, they, they're, that's why they were so God conscious. That's why they were, they were ascended masters, because they knew how this shit works. So the god... Like Isis, she was self-realized. She knew that she was part of this oneness wisdom. So she had access to this alchemy. So she'd just holler at, like, I don't know, see a Hugh Hecker and say, Hecker, hey, hook me up. Somebody, somebody wants, um, you know, somebody wants a good crop. You know what I mean? And she would pour in this energy and frequency and gift it to the people. So when you're in oneness wisdom, it was just an instantaneous thing because the gods don't see themselves as separation. We do, I do, because I'm still breaking it down in three parts. But that's where our consciousness is. And hopefully with working with Heka, ongoing, all day, every day, that will switch and we will become self-realized. And we will understand and know that we are the all one, okay? We are Heka, right? So now I'm going to move into Sia. Because Sia is the god of perception. So that's where we start, right? He is the god that will basically give you the downloads, the kind of idea, all right? Because for any manifestation project, anything at all, you have to have a vision. If you don't have a vision, you don't have an intention. And if you have no intention, you've got no anchor. Now, what happens is when you don't have that, that intention, how can anything be de delivered to you? If you're, if you're kind of looking at the men at memo going, well, I think I'm going to have sushi. I might have steak or maybe I just cut straight to the chase and just go with brownies now if that's the message you're giving to the universe and the multiverse for them to deliver the hecka it's not going to be powerful it's going to be a mix mash and it's just not it's not going to work is it so you have to be really really clear in your vision okay so you've got to get right with that are you thinking big enough okay are you listening you know is your do you have a block in your third eye is there something that you need to understand as to why you can't see or why you don't want to see because if you see then you're going to have to see your own power maybe that's something you're scared of so you see where you can go with this when you work with seer seer will help you clear all of that distortion away so this is splickety nick and you just you just like zoomed in you're like right that's what it's looking like and then when you can see it you can feel it now manifestation is all about feeling so again we kind of get told this all the time right that we've got to feel it in our own body but if your vision is not clear if you haven't spent time with your intention and maybe cleared the distortions which is blocking this vision 
then what can I tell you? You know what I mean? You're already starting on the back foot. So even though we get told by Esther Hicks and all these really powerful leaders in the manifestation game, you know, like it's not just, you can't just feel. If, if the vision isn't clear, you have to sit right with that. Sometimes I have to sit for a month because I'm trying to like really get clear on what I want to bring forth and manifest. Let me tell you, the Tablets of Light Tour didn't just come through. I had the idea. And then I sat with it and I went back to Egypt again and again and I just I just kept fine tuning it and 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 really took my time in spit and polishing it and just it was my baby. So don't rush the process. Like I say, the tablets of light has been years in the making, not saying it's going to take you that long, but I just preferred to go with the evolution of the of the creation and get the vision really, really clear. And then once I got it clear enough, then I could anchor it in. And let me tell you, each year that's going past now with the tablets of light. It's actually, it's running its own way. It's, it's, now, it's now got its own breathing energy. And that's what happens with your creations. They start to become, they start to come alive. And then like if you were channeling Isis or Sekhmet, you channel your, your being that you've created. And they also start talking to you. They take on a life of their own. And this is what I love about Heka. So Sia is all about the vision, okay? And he will connect you with all sorts that you need to work with to clear the cobwebs out of here, to clear, clear the ears out, whatever needs to be done. Seer is so powerful when he comes in to work with you. And he might not work with you directly per se. He might bring in Horus, which is all about vision. So he might be the one that comes in when you work with him for that first session. Because like I say, the, 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 the Hecker Code's mentorship and the Hecker Code's course, which is what I offer, comes in three, obviously, three um, uh, experiences, three sessions. So this is what the first one kind of feels like. This is what you concentrate on and then you go away and you give it time and have fun with allowing the vision to show itself. And then that is your staff that you anchor in the ground. So when you're walking through the process, this staff is strong. It, it really connects like an antennae. It connects you and you're like, right, I've got a strong staff. I've got a good antennae. The vision's um, uh, tweaking, everything's great. And I've really got a clean, clean eye of sight on this. And that is what the, the first, um, the first process, the first part of the process of Heka is all about, working with the God Seer. So I'm going to let that all marinate and then I'm going to go into the second video and I'm going to um, share with you the next, um, the next Hecka God, which is Hugh. So if you want to kind of dive deeper into this, just to let you know that I will be doing a, a live on Thursday which I don't know what date it is on Thursday, um, but it, I think it's the 29th. Don't quote me, I always get this stuff wrong. But on Thursday the 29th in my Circle community, okay? So I will put a link for you to join Circle and that's where I do my lives. And it's a no cost call, just jump on and we start kind of like delving deep into this. And then of course, if you wanna go deeper, you can go into the mentorship and you can go into the course, um, but, uh, but you know, you just feel it out first of all, like wet your whistle, okay? And then once you've kind of like eased into it, then it's go time. So all of that will be in the link and then like, you'll be able to really access all that other stuff in, in the Circle community. So let me sign off on this and I will move on to video two. Thanks for watching.